Hello everyone who is watching this, whether it be on YouTube or because I sent you a link to this video. Um, I probably sent you a resume and cover letter along with that. Unless you're watching it on YouTube on your own accord, then hey, congrats, you're going to watch a 28-year-old ask for a job. So maybe go to the next video. Um, so yes, uh, my name is Brian Tobin. I am 28 years old. I am from Newfoundland. And uh, I guess if you do have my resume or cover letter there with you, I am going to ask you politely to rip it up. Throw it out. Because how is that going to stand out from anyone else who gave you a resume or cover letter? It's the same black and white paper. It's the same where my last job were, where some references are, and where I'm currently living. Um, you don't get to see this beautiful face. I know, it's so beautiful. It's not. It's definitely made for radio. However, in this video, I'm going to kind of elaborate on my resume and cover letter. Not getting too much into detail, but I'm going to explain things that you would not see on a resume, basically. Uh, so if you're watching this, whether you are a CBC employee, CBC manager, Rogers manager, employee, Bell, on and on, um, you know, TSN, Sportsnet, whoever you are, um, just know that this is a video made to kind of maybe stand out a little bit and give you a little bit of a background of things you don't see on a resume and things that uh, if you did see, you'd probably be a little bit surprised. Um, I'll, I'll backdate it to maybe 2014, but I won't, I won't go too much into detail. So in 2014, uh, once I was done at Carleton with my communication degree, went to Loyalist and got my sports journalism diploma, and then went into the radio program at Algonquin, I did some internships. I was at CTV Ottawa, I did CBC in Newfoundland, Ottawa Sun, and Global. Internships are great, however, as uh, someone who has experienced internships and many others, the media internships aren't exactly that great in terms of what they provide that student. I understand that there's this whole union thing that, you know, we're account you're accountable if we kind of mess up. But you don't get to really do much on internships. Now, you still get to learn, which is awesome. Uh, but after I was done my internships, I decided that, you know, I want to show these people that I could have done more if I was given the chance. So I came up with my own podcast. I host it, produce it, edit it, reach out to the acts themselves. Um, and that's basically how I'm kind of staying in this media bubble, per se. Um, you can definitely check, check out some of the episodes. It's called Tobin Tonight. We're on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, just a whole bunch of platforms. Um, so yeah, and I, I guess, honestly, I just kept on doing it because I knew if I didn't do anything for three or four years... No one's going to reach out to you. The jobs will dwindle and dwindle because you haven't done anything in three or four years. Um, it's incredibly discouraging to think that way, but it is the uh, nature of the beast. Um, I've applied to 100 Bell jobs, 100 Rogers jobs, no exaggeration. And sometimes I don't get any replies. Sometimes I get replies of, you are a valued member to our team. I do not know how I'm a valued member to a team where I don't walk in with a badge. It doesn't say my name. Um, it doesn't even say Dear Brian. I, I think that's incredibly insulting. And if you work for one of those companies, please, please try to fix that. Um, because it kind of turns people off from wanting to apply to these jobs. Uh, but there you go. Uh, I applied to these jobs maybe all day at current workplaces, all night. I I've spent hours upon hours applying to jobs, um, fixing resumes, catering resumes, trying to make connections. Now, I do have connections with both these companies, but when you get connections for three or four years and it doesn't really feel like it's going anywhere, it does start to become a little bit discouraging. Um, and that's something that you're not going to see on a resume. You're not going to see someone's willingness and drive to succeed because that is it. I am driven to succeed in this field, and whether it takes me, uh, well, let me guess, right now it's probably about five years, so whether it takes me another five or ten years, 
I am willing to succeed in this, and this is what I have a drive to do. Um, not based on anything dealing with like, oh, I, I just want to be on TV or I want to do interviews. It's just that I do have a passion um, for broadcasting. In general, I like it, doing interviews with musicians. I like interviewing sports stars. Uh, I like the entertainment side of things. Um, not to say that you can't be serious. I can be serious. I'm a Newfoundlander by trade. It is in our blood just to be a little bit kind of a, a goofy or a comic relief, but I'm okay with that. Um, another thing that you will not see on a resume that is incredibly discouraging at times, um, just because I, I'm not saying it's discouraging in the sense that people don't see it. Uh, it's just discouraging that you know, no one really asks about it. I am a person with a disability. And I bring this up because if you look at me, you might say, I don't see a disability. I think you're a loser. And thanks, mom. Uh, but uh, I am a person with a disability. My disability is Sturge Weber syndrome. And if you don't know about that, that's okay. Because I'm going to explain it briefly to you. Um, it causes me to have seizures, strokes, uh, in recent years, it's basically been labeled as uh, migraines. So what happens is I will lose feeling in my, I always go with my left, uh, my right arm and my right leg. It lasts maybe about 15, 20 minutes. And to be honest, I'm aware the whole time. So if we were in a workplace and it happened, I would be able to look at you right in the eye and say, I think something's happening here. Uh, I just need like 10 or 15 minutes just to kind of, you know, let this pass. And then everything is normal. Um, what causes it? Lack of sleep, lack of food, um, anxiety. But to be honest, that's all stuff that I can control myself pretty much. And just making sure that you take your pill. Uh, it's just to thin the blood, I, I believe. Yeah, to thin the blood. Um, so yeah, that's totally under control, but people don't really understand that. And so I wanted to just bring that to light. Um, it does not dictate how I, you know, function in any way. It doesn't, you know, stop me from doing interviews. It doesn't stop me from, um, you know, being capable of working. Let's put it that way. And, you know, I guess to close up the video here is, you know, I, I'm just really looking for an opportunity to succeed. I think that I can be um, a really good asset at a workplace that, you know, accepts that disability, that accepts creativity, that just, you know, embraces, um, you know, someone young coming in and wanting to succeed and wanting to be loyal to the company that hired them. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I cannot stress enough how driven I am to succeed and how many ideas that are up here that, you know, they might not all be panned out, but they're ideas, and I'm willing to pitch them. I'm willing to go into meetings and say, why don't we try this? Why don't we do this? Uh, can I do that? Can, is this possible for me to do this? Um, all I'm really looking for is a chance to succeed and to actually find a job in this workplace that I think is incredibly important, because if you have someone like myself that, you know, has a disability... Um, that's really worked their way to try to get into this field. They have a better appreciation of what they have. They have a better appreciation of, um, you know, things that go into, uh, making a show or making a production. Uh, they have a better appreciation for maybe fans and for other stories like themselves that, you know, maybe in 10 years, if I am on TV or if I am doing interviews, some with a disability might say, I would never be in those shoes. I can never get there. And then they come across your story and say, if he's done it, I can do it. And that's kind of my lifelong goal in a way is to be successful, but also to pave the way for other people with disabilities to prove that you can do this. You can succeed if you're put in the right, um, I guess, area or in the right job. Uh, so if there's anything else that you need to know, I, I, I know it's kind of like rambling here, but I don't want to make this too long. Um, just ask me, feel free to ask me any questions, send me an email, 
And just hopefully you'll reach out to me and you might have something there for me. Uh, whether it be, you know, in, in the summer or in the next few months or weeks. And, you know, if there's anything else you need to know, like I said, just send me an email. Uh, I, I'm incredibly chatty. So, you know, spare, spare like 30 to 40 minutes because I will talk the ear off you. Um, I wish sometimes someone would take talk the ears off me because those are, those are big. I can hear you from miles away. So don't talk crap. Maybe do. I won't care. Anyway. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, other than that, I'm just looking for a chance to succeed in a workplace that, um, or in a career that I really want to be a part of someday. And I think it would be really cool because you know what? I want to follow in the footsteps of some great Newfoundlanders and great broadcasters. Um, you know, like your Rick Mercers, your Tom Powers, or great broadcasters like, uh, your James Duthies your Peter Mansbridges. And to be fair, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to criticize, but the world is changing and they did get a break. Some of these people did get a break just by their personality. They didn't have to go to school or didn't have a career background in broadcasting, which is kind of where we're to in today's world. But does that mean that people like myself have to get shunned out or kicked to the curb because we actually went to school to try to improve, um, a field in broadcasting. Like, I can't go in to be a doctor, but a doctor can start a podcast tomorrow and become a media celebrity. That's the way it is. Uh, it kind of sucks that way, but I, I still think that there is hope and there is a place for people that went to school, did journalism, and actually, like myself, are desperately trying to find a job and are eager, eager to succeed. Uh, so that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you didn't, uh, you know, give it a thumbs down, and, you know, feel free to yell at me in an email. I'm used to it. See ya.